Hello, my name is Ikello Herod, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. And this is an unusual and wonderful and big episode that we're going to have today. I have a guest. That's right, my very first guest. I've decided that I wanted to, since I've had such a great time doing these wonderful live streams on the weekends, I have started to really connect with a lot of authors, and I really wanted to have more of a conversation with them. And I decided a while ago that I would ask several of these gurus to actually come on to my show, my Wii channel, my, my humble channel, and help explain to people the better parts of writing with AI, some of the misconceptions and some of their background. And we're going to do that today with a very special guest. She is an educator on the Slack channels uh, that are in pseudo right. I'm almost positive that she is a uh, ambassador because she was actually running a class uh, that I was in last week, uh, last month. And she is a consummate teacher, a person who absolutely cares about the craft and what it is to build narratives and fiction in this future of ours. All right. As I've said many times before, let's have ourselves a good time in the future of fiction in this factory of mine. <laughs> okay. Her name is Marigold, and I am so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. Okay, let's bring her on in, and we're going to start out with a little bit of history, do some stuff. We're going to talk. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Marigold. Marigold, how you doing? <laughs> I am doing very well. How are you today? I'm doing so good. I'm so, so, so very good. All right. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember when the first time I saw your wonderful uh, Day of the Dead mask, the first time I saw it. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was, I think it was like three or four days after I first signed up for Pseudo Right and I got into the Slack channel. And you were one of the one of the many people who were helping to contribute to this knowledge base that is AI writing. Am I correct? Yes, it's such a great community full of people who are willing to step forward and help their fellow writers. Something I just absolutely love about the Slack channel. Yeah, it's um, pretty much a testament to the. Uh, to the leaders over at Pseudo Right that they would start would would spin up such a vibrant community that has spawned so many other communities from that nugget of a community. I, I'm telling you, there are lots and lots of people who uh, are that were war, were and are completely involved in that Slack channel that are doing videos, including yourself which we're going to talk about at some point. Uh, and all of the all of the authors who are contributing uh, daily to uh, deep, thought-filled prompt engineering, real prompt engineering, where we're, where we're not like, you know, throwing stuff at the wall, hoping something sticks. We are, we're getting our, our hands dirty. We're, coming back we're flipping it over and i'm pretty sure that uh you came up with a pretty cool formula for i i'm screenwriting in pseudo right correct yes i think that was actually the first time that i engaged with you was in maybe a little impromptu session before my actual script writing class through the ambassador program because I kind of yeah. dropped into a class that another instructor was going to be teaching, but the times had gotten messed up and 
I stepped in, I just went ahead and began to show some screenshots just so that we could continue the conversation during an author hour, which was great because so, there were so many people in there. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, uh, start at the beginning because the beginning is a very good place to start. You are a educator, am I correct? I actually teach on the corporate side for learning and development, have done that for over 14 years. You know, I can feel it in your uh, Zoom meetings. The, um, the inherent patience with the slow corporate individual who is paying your bill. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the your your patience it, it it is exuded. All right, so let's um, let's go back to the beginning. You that's what you do. Um, that's how you've uh, cut your teeth in keep, t cut your teeth in the uh, realm of teaching. But how in the world uh, did you even? get into writing in the first place? I mean, were you part of the Kindle boom? What happened? So actually my writing journey starts really far back. I have always written, have always been a poet. Even in high school, I wrote poetry. I have thousands of poems packed away. I just really never shared my work with people children, wrote short stories, told them stories, which I have now since then turned into books. But I really didn't jump into fictional works until my daughter was about 13 or so. She began to show an interest in writing. And there were not any workshops, no communities for individuals her age. So we actually started a workshop and meet up in our local city. And we also started a group at our local library that was open for 13 and up. And that was a really great experience, but her love of writing brought back my love of writing and I began to write. And of course I have a technical background with writing manuals for corporate level because I used to work for a tier one company under IBM. So I did a lot of training manuals, but she kind of pushed me into wanting to write fiction again. And so I guess I started that around 2010, finally submitted something 2013 and was published and became a hybrid writer. But I did not come on the AI scene until December of 2022. I um, remember that day. I remember the day that someone said, you know, there's this thing called chat GPT. And then I saw an article about it and I went, well, how do I sign up for that? And they just let you sign up for it. I thought, okay, well, what does it do? Is there, and, then, and I started playing around with it. And then I quickly realized probably what you realized and that was, boy, oh boy, this thing can help me write really good fiction. Is that how that happened for you? Because that's how that happened for me. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you, my I, I have children, I have adult children, and it was yeah. so crazy. My older boys, they both said, mom, you've got to check this side out. I went out there and I'm kind of poking around and I began to see implications of how this AI system can be used and it is just blowing my mind and like you I started thinking hey I can use this for some plotting this is a cool author resource and the more I used it the more I realized wow I can use it for plotting I can use it for restructuring oh my gosh I can use prompts in there and write a whole novel so I just <laughs> I literally did not sleep for like 24 hours or more because I could not get off of it. I, there was something, uh, I, uh, I had the privilege to go to Belize with some very, very uh, nice friends who uh, kind of pay for us to be there so that we could uh, help them with their kids <laughs> who we oh, love wow. anyway. 
yeah, who we love anyway, but we were on a beach in Belize and uh, this thing drops a week before I left. Uh, and it's blowing up and all of this stuff. And I started figuring it out right before we go down to Belize. And then I show it to one of my engineer friends and uh, engineers. I love them, but uh, they're, they're really good with uh, technical imagination, but their, um, their uh, practical world imagination uh, does not pop off all the time. And so she uh, looked at it and she goes, well, what do you ask it? I said, what do you mean? What do you ask? You ask it anything. And she said, oh, can I ask it what the meaning of life is? I said, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, <laughs> she goes, um, wh wh why not? I said, first, it doesn't know. Second, it's a machine. Third, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I start listing off the reasons why she should not do that. Do not start getting existential with it or it will get existential with you and you'll be disappointed in the end because it is not alive. But what it is, is a great resource as an assistant to help you, yes, plot, yes, come up with ideas, but maybe even help you with whole passages whole sections, whole chapters, all because you led the story that way through your beats. Am I right? Oh, definitely. Uh, and, and that's funny that you said that about your friend being an engineer, because my oldest child, he's has a background in computational neuroscience with an AI emphasis. And he uses the system. He's one of my first introduction to chat GPT was through him and he was asking all these questions and he was actually trying to, I don't want to say break the system. He was trying to manipulate it to provide information that may be outside of what the parameters were. So he was talking to it in that manner. Me on the other hand, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can write a story. Oh my gosh. I can take one specific scene and flip it into like 15 different genres it just it was incredible how you can tweak it and make it give you something completely different I took a western into an alien romance into an academy I, it just I could take it into a paranormal world and then rip it out and make it contemporary so yeah I I I completely understand how you felt about that Boy, I was so drained. I remember being like, just I would stay up. I would stay up and work so hard wrestling with the early version of of uh, Chat GPT. What three point oh? Remember that? Yes. yes. Oh man! And I mean, before three point so five funny. came out, it was like it would go off the rails in three seconds. You think it actually? What this is the problem? It would do a great job at first. And you think, oh, here we go. And then, <laughs> and then it would literally like dissemble so badly, it would just spool out. <laughs> and you, you know, and then I spent all my time just wrestling, but I treasured that time because a lot of the people who are working with artificial intelligence now, first off, they don't have these sort of fundamentals of what could go wrong or what to what what you're seeing uh is wrong like you know they the but we can tell because we would wrestle with it and and it would go off the rails and it's our story anyway you know that's why i tell people to be so specific when they are writing with artificial intelligence like if you watch eaw she literally has uh, some of the most intricate uh, beats you've ever seen because she's just writing the story as a telling exercise. She's telling yeah. the, you know, she's telling, and I, I, I don't, you know, I, I really, I think I really need to uh, uh, spin up a whole video about telling, uh, not showing when it comes to 
uh, writing with AI. If you want AI to show people stuff, then you've got to tell it what to show. <laughs> and they don't. I don't think people get that. So now let's let's talk about prompt engineering. Let's actually have that conversation. So um, you are by far one of the most innovative people that I've run into that, um, I mean, besides, of course, John over on Slack. We, and we won't call him, we won't say what his last name is, but Marigold and I both know who John is. I know exactly <laughs> who John is. He, he is fabulous when it uh, I tell you, I wish that, you know, I could have a Vulcan mind melt right there and learn everything that he knows about Notion because. What do you mean with the actual Vulcan? Because that's what John is. (laughs) Mind melt. Um, Yeah, John John is a Vulcan. (laughs) I don't. I Some of the stuff, you know, and he spins things up so fast and he understands things so fast and what he can do, what you can ultimately do with AI. I'm surprised that some uh, software engineer hasn't snagged him up for <laughs> development of their, of their own writing program. You know what I mean? Cause he, he, he has so many ideas. He helps me. I have to run things. Like if I build a thing, that's really, really hard. If I don't run it past John, uh, like, <laughs> I mean, if I, cause the, the first, you know, storycraft template was this process. You, I, I don't think people um, understand because you've also built uh, tools like that. Um, so here, so here's the uh, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like prompts. You built yeah. engineered prompts to to uh, yield certain types of fiction, screenwriting, um, uh, nonfiction, whatever it is. You've built uh, prompts. Uh, what would you say? are some of your fundamentals around tackling prompt uh, tackling prompt engineering? I think the fundamental there would have to be the fact that I marry my understanding of the writing craft along with AI and how to prompt the AI. As an extreme plotter planner, I, I plot everything. I know every aspect of my story. And Me too. even before AI, my outlines were just massive. Drove Cece crazy. She's one of my writing partners. And I just, I'm so intricate. And I wanted to know how I could take my process or a similar process and marry it with the AI and how I could prompt it. Now, keep in mind that I have a background in learning and development, but right. another caveat to that is that I also do a lot of beta testing. So I beta test for different types of software, whether it is screenwriting software or Grammarly or you know uh, other types of software, I beta test for a whole slew of them. So I understand how to go in and learn a system from the ground up And in order to prompt, I had to understand how to engage the AI. And I can tell you that it kind of varies from AI to AI, but at the core, the questions can remain the same. And it's understanding what do I need first in a story? I need to understand what my genre is, my subgenre. I need to know what my tropes and my themes are. How can I prompt the AI to give me what I need? And that's what I begin to think about when I am putting together my templates. I basically just tell the AI exactly what it is that I'm needing and have that conversation. And once I find a really good prompt stem, then I build upon that stem and turn it into different genres, different categories. And then I begin to flesh out to see how I can take that premise into a synopsis and an extended synopsis, how I can build that outline, those primary beats in your outline, and then flesh those out into story beats for a chapter. So I look at all very chronological. So the, um, uh, let's talk about uh, prompt stem. You said the word stem. Does that mean yes. the, the, the initial nugget of the thing you're building out from? Yeah, so I use a core stem, and because I do have a background in learning and development, when you 
create a whole bunch of like question pools for students. You have something that's very basic and standard, and then you build upon that. So when it comes to maybe the, the generation of premises, you will notice that a lot of my prompts will have some of the core language that goes across each one. And I do that consistently because if it works and it's not broken, then I keep that stem and then just keep building upon it. So if you've looked at several of my prompts, you'll see that anything dealing with premise or synopsis tends to have a lot of the same verbiage, but I do change it up depending on what type of story I am asking for, whether it is a thriller, young adult, middle grade, it is a short story, or if it is a script, or if I'm looking to have a treatment generated instead of, say, a synopsis. So I, I have to look at what it is that I'm looking to have the AI present for me. Yeah. Um whether it be a screen, uh, uh, um, a screenplay, whether it be a uh, short story that you're working on, no matter what it is, the principle doesn't really change that much. You have to have that that um, that first initial uh, thought. Um, I know that uh, EAW, and just in case anybody doesn't know who EAW is, Elizabeth Ann West. Uh, she's yeah. one of the um, I let's just call her the top of the mountain, and uh, she runs. She she runs a very very um, uh, deep think tank called the Future Fiction Academy, and I do call yeah. it a think tank. It is a think tank. You may think it's a course. You may think it's a um, whatever you may think, but it's actually a think tank. And P, everyone that gets involved in the Future Fiction Academy actually is helping to develop everything that's going on over there. Um, and and they are, and she has a, I, I don't know, it's almost like a natural ability to prompt. Um, a lot of people uh, have said to me, well, how do you, how do you come up with these prompts? Well, I, because, uh, I dictate, I, uh, it's easier to get the stream of consciousness about exactly the idea, what the idea is. If you can explain it to someone, then you can explain it to a AI. Uh, and so that's why I use dictation. Um, a lot of times people spend time trying to craft exactly what the right words are. I am a over prompter. What are you? Are you an over prompter? And then you peel back and then, you know, because I, I, I give it a, uh, uh, as much information as I think it might need, even some information that it might not need, but I give it to it anyway, <laughs> you know, and then I, and then as it, we go back and if it does something real then I'll, I'll start peeling back some of those things and telling it to disregard, you know what I mean? I do it a little, op I guess I do it a little bit opposite of that. I tend to start very lean. And then I build upon the the stem, that lean stem that I have. Think of it as mathematical. Yeah, th think of it as a, a mathematical equation or a proof. And I am needing to solve a solution. And think about the order of operation when it comes to solving a mathematical equation. You need to get to the heart of it. But in order to get to the heart of what that question, you know, that that proof is you have to understand how to make that flow work and you have to be able to work that equation and you have to start very basic within that equation and then build from there because you can you prompt out of order sure but <clears throat> I'm very chronological so when I think of prompting I want to start at the very beginning and then go forward. Now, and that's interesting because John, when he's doing something, he likes to deconstruct and he might start at a completely different part of the process. But in writing, there is no one size fits all solution. So even if John, you, 
um, you know, Elizabeth and I, we can all have different processes, but we come to the same solution. And that's okay because writing, like I said, it's not a one size fits all task. Like pantsers and plotters. Like uh, the way that yeah. I write, the way I write a prompt is um, uh, I kind of bring it in. You're more of a laboratory prompter. I'm more of a like big factory prompter where I have like, <laughs> you know, the, the ultimate uh, um, uh, metaphor me being the future fiction factory, but like yeah. a big factory where we have a, a R and D section where there's 18 million things going on back there. And then we hack it out and then we put it on the line to see if we can make it actually fit uh, our industrial uh, process. And if it doesn't we bring it back, and we, you know, that's how I do it. Um, and the way you do it is more like a laboratory where you have this, uh, ha you have a, a um, either a thesis or some type of uh, possibility or a scenario that you think is really great, but you need to get from here to there. And you think that the best way to do it is to walk the tightrope and, uh, and, and build it up piece by piece. And that's, I, I don't think that there's, I, I don't think that either way, like you said, I don't think that either way uh, detracts you. You have to be who you are. You know what I mean? And uh, that is what writing is, is absolutely being who you are. Uh, Mr. Sanderson writes different than uh, EAW, <laughs> who writes Definitely. different than Stephen King, who writes different than Marigold, who writes different <laughs> than me. You know what I mean? So um, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's a, I, I'm, I'm absolutely going to have a great time having conversations with everyone about their prompting styles. Cause it's a big deal to me. It's a, uh, I want people to, uh, through these conversations, it would be really nice if everyone kind of understood that uh, not to be intimidated by artificial intelligence and not to, not to look at it like it's this thing that's going to completely take you out of the equation when people should be embracing this. And that's, and, and knowing that they can enter this arena from different angles is a big deal to me. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a big deal for you to have knowledge that, or, or have the, the confidence that maybe your perspective might be a unique one. There's this, um, gentleman named Stryker who's on uh, several of the forums and so on and so forth. And uh, he has such an interesting, he's a uh, video editor. He edits Hollywood documentaries, movies, stuff like that. And he totally, I think, looks at uh, artificial intelligence from this sort of give and take sort of point of view, something completely different than the way I look at it or Jason looks at it or you look at it. I, I, I I, I am constantly amazed at the new approaches that people have to uh, prompt engineering. That That is amazing in itself because listening to the different people and how they are tackling the process of prompting, I learned so much by just observing and being able to see the tool or the resource from different perspectives and seeing how people tackle them. My, I guess one of my first in-face or face-to-face -face conversation with AI came from a Facebook group. And they were talking about AI. And I'm like, okay, I've got to see what this is. So I saw some negative stuff. I saw some positive things. And I talked to um, a lady named Stephanie. And Stephanie actually introduced me to Elizabeth. And so I had all questions. And let me tell you, Elizabeth was so personable. I messaged her just out of the blue and asked her, hey, what can you tell me about AI? And here I am asking her all these very blunt, you know, to the point questions. And she being so personable, answering my questions and saying, hey, if you have more questions or you want to learn more about AI, go to this, go to that link. And I began to research more. If I had questions, I would come back. But that 
that was a huge thing to, to actually have that kind of warm invite to the AI community. Now, if I had encountered, I guess, more negativity, then maybe I would have had a different viewpoint. But my first initial interaction was so positive. And I, I would wish that for anybody. Because like you said, AI is a resource and it is something that can help individuals. It is not a tool that can put you out of business. It's a tool that can take you to the next level. It can make things so streamlined for you as a writer, as a creative. And it's just yeah. learning how to utilize it. So uh, since we've kind of like tapped on the uh, corner of it, Let's just have a uh, quick, brief discussion about the uh, the writer strike and the AI implications. Now, this is what uh, you were you were literally just talking about this idea that people think that it's going to take their jobs. The, I think that the idea that a corporation could just wholesale build an entire show with AI and uh, cut all human beings out of it to be one. A ludicrous and loon, uh, loon, a looney tune thing for the corporation to even try to do. Um, so I am totally in support of the writers getting their due, getting their money, getting the things that they need in order to actually have a living as a writer in Hollywood. We, I, I, I'm, I, I know, I hope I'm not speaking for you, uh, uh, just wholesale either, but I, I think you agree with me. Am I right? So I think one of the biggest things that I see with the writer strike today is how much the industry has changed. And even prior to AI with the streaming industry, it really impacts the way a writer actually makes a living today. And because of that, you know, before a writer could count on those royalty checks, but with streaming and other avenues, we can you know, we can't do that now. Nope. And I think that's why it's important for the strike to go forward. I don't think everybody who is striking has such a negative look on AI, but the implication of how it can be used in the wrong hands could be, you know, some concern, especially if it is used to take on the persona of maybe an actress or a writer or a narrator's voice without that person's permission. So ensuring that those laws and that liability is taken care of, I think is a huge thing for all of us as creators. And I think that I think that they're right in wanting to make sure that the writer strike yields positive results for creatives everywhere because this is something that's going to set the precedence for you know years to come. So yeah, I, I'm fully in support for it, but I do feel that if more people started looking at AI as a resource, I think that it would have a completely different feel to it. Yeah, right now there's all this uh, uh, FAI stuff, you know, just casual, you know, and as if no one, none of them even want to talk about ever using AI because they're real writers or something. And th this is a, a very, very, very uh, different world we are about to enter. Very much. <laughs> and, uh, and those sorts of blanket statements, I have this strange feeling are going to be um, looked at as a past thing weirdly like it people uh, in the future will look back at this moment and go what so nobody used it you know that sort of thing like nobody how could you how could you possibly write everything i want you to write if uh if you didn't have the assistance like i mean i can't tell you i'm a prof a professional photographer i go to cosplay conventions i do portraits do corporate photography that sort of thing and um and uh i can't tell you uh how i would be without photoshop and uh, uh lightroom they are yeah, some of the most 
prolific tools that Lightroom, I'm able to make one edit on a picture that is a uh, that is similar like all of the other pictures that I took uh, of the same person. And I'm able to apply those edits across an entire stream, uh, 150 pictures of that person or something yeah. like that if I wanted to. And I wouldn't be able to, if I tried to do that by hand and I was in a light room and I was everybody, every single one of the pictures so I could see which one I wanted to give them. And I mean, technology has to move on, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. it actually has to move it, on. It does. It does. I, we use Grammarly. We use Pro Writing Aid. We use so many different resources today. This is just another resource for us to use. And point in case, I don't hear certain burst ranges, so I have a hard time hearing certain sounds. So I am i don't watch a lot of television unless I can read the captions. And one of the things that I did, I, I ended up writing a musical just to see if I could do that with AI assistance. I came up with the concept from beginning to end, and I have a background in writing poetry and lyrical content. So I kind of used AI as that aid to help me write the script with direction. But the other caveat to that, which I thought was so amazing, is that I took that script, I actually wrote part of it inside of Chat GPT for, and then I wrote some of it inside of PseudoWrite Story Engine. But when it was finished, I kept thinking, okay, it feels like it's missing something. What's it missing? And I didn't want to send it to anybody yet to take a look at it. So I knew as a writer that I felt that, that I needed something more. Well, I went ahead and went into Jasper and I uploaded the whole manuscript into Jasper and I began to ask it specific questions about my manuscript. I asked it to evaluate it. I asked it to take a look at the beats because I did follow the Snyder beat sheet for it. And it began to evaluate, show me areas where there was some weakness, areas that were unclear and things that I could flesh out. So I did that. And then I went ahead and sent it to one of the producers of, that I had gone back and forth with. She absolutely loved it. But Again, it, it gave me the ability to brainstorm, to workshop my own piece before I ever sent it somewhere else. And it helped me to pinpoint what I already felt was wrong and that I had an idea that needed to be changed. That's perfect. Mm. And see, that's it. It feels it feels powerful, you know, like like a a real like step change in the way we get to develop things. The, and uh, I, I am so, I, I so don't want anyone to, I don't know. I don't want anyone to miss out on this. I, Oh, I agree. I, I just feel like, what are we doing here? <laughs> You know, either either we're living we're living for a better world, a world where uh, where everyone can learn about the wonderful drama and humanity of diversity and difference in this world from thing to thing to thing. And I say diversity in the most generic way. Meaning yeah. uh, you get to be an American and experience people's French life. You get to be a, you know, uh, the artificial intelligence is making it so that when people actually speak uh, in English, they can have their thing translated and their mouth matches the translation and their yes. voice is also used in the translation. And you watch them actually speaking in a different language. That is artificial intelligence at its best you know the the ability yeah. to uh transcend everything is a as a powerful tool and like i said tool tool yet again tool it is a 
tool. It is not. It is a tool. You know, and it, for a long time before there is true AGI that has agency and is doing its own thing and helping or not helping or whatever is going to happen. It until that moment, we can consider this the best tool for fiction out there. Well, and it, it's incredible that every time evolution takes place and you you hear it, you, you can read about it all through history where times have evolved. It, it's looking at the industrial age and how people thought that that was just going to completely ruin the lives of, you know, every individual alive during that time. Well, you know, it helped people. Think about the medical technology that we have today that can assist people. We have people living longer today than we did 100 years ago, 200 years ago. And we have technology to thank for that. And taking a look at how kids today are learning in the classroom, there are things that I never got to experience inside of school, whether it was primary or college. I I did not get to see the world the way that young people get to see it today. And it is just thrilling uh, to, you know, piggyback off of what you just said about, you know, diversity and being able to take a look at the world as a whole and see you know, that universal language of emotion and how it, it transcends. And whether you are happy, I it doesn't matter what language you're speaking. Happiness is happiness. And that's why I'm saying it's it's amazing to be able to see that in pseudo write and story engine. One of the things that amazed me the most, and it just blew my mind because I wasn't thinking in that regard was having some individuals who were from, you know, Italy, from France, different areas. And they're like, how can I get it to write in my native tongue? And working with some of those individuals, I was just blown away that these individuals were plugging in information in Italian or in Spanish. And they was speaking it out in English or it would continue in their native tongue. And I thought, this is amazing. It is not just a tool for, you know, a small group of people. This is a tool for the world. And it just, I, I can't even imagine where it's going to be five years from now. Yeah, I, I can't yeah. even imagine where it'll be five days from now. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine if, uh, I mean, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of uh, people out there who use, like local language models that they put on their actual machines. I mean, there is yes. so much. Uh, imagine, imagine they, they've got this new one, Llama 2. You've heard about it? Yes, yes. Yes, from, from Meta. And uh, I've got a Mac and I could actually, if I cleared everything out and did everything like I was supposed to, I could probably download uh, Llama 2 and run it locally on my machine. And then I could take, all of my writing. So I work on a bunch of writing and finally get it all taken care of and edited like I want. And that's me. That's my voice. That's the way I want it to look, right? And then you take all of those books, all of that stuff, and you start feeding them into Llama to create more of what you like to like to read. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think that a lot of people get that uh that i mean especially the ones who have aspirations of being writers because of artificial intelligence uh that aspiration can go from being just an aspiration to actual words on the page in a matter of days uh day, yeah. literal days where you where the learning process, the learning curve, all of that isn't really as, and especially with stuff like pseudo write, which yeah. is a plug and play sort of, hey, put your stuff in here and let's add some stuff to it. Let's expand this out. Let's give you more description. Let's describe this. Let's metaphor that. Let's, you know what yeah. I mean? And so it's a plug and play piece of equipment. 
And I I am excited about the day when people start having packaged programs, uh, actual programs where you can purchase and or whatever, and it's downloaded onto your Mac or downloaded onto your PC, and you have your own personal uh, writing assistant that's local to you that you can take with you on the road that you can play with on the plane. Imagine a long flight to Fiji. That's right. I said Fiji. <laughs> and <laughs> and you have it's 16 hours. You're in the air for 16 hours. Imagine the stuff you could get done in the air in 16 hours if you had a large language model helping you crank out a book or something. And right yeah. when you get to Fiji is when your vacation starts. So it takes five hours to fly to uh, Hawaii. I would work all the way there on the plane. Uh, and then when I got my feet off of the off of the plane and onto the into that little airport in Kauai, I don't know if you've ever been to that airport, but it is heaven. And you get off of that, uh, get out of that plane and walk, uh, walk out into that beautiful like rainforest sort of beautiful island. I don't want to have to think about nothing else. And that is the perfect way to create on the go and be done with it. And, you know, get a deadline done and be done with it. Not have any contact with the outside world. Not have an internet connection. I just, the idea of that type of writing independence for me, for a person who isn't super good, super, uh, you know, well-versed at uh, creating beautiful prose, this gives me such a superpower. It feels like a super pop. Well, it's like having an instructor in your back pocket, because if you're not sure what something is, all you have to do is ask. Now, yep. unlike you, if I'm on a plane, I would get absolutely nothing done because I cannot function on drama mean. And there is absolutely <laughs> no way nobody would want to fly with me awake for 12 hours because it would just be miserable. <laughs> So I live in Washington state, which is a cannabis happy state. So Dramamine and or Valium isn't that big a deal. When I, fly. I can get quite I get a bit done. A, one. I get such bad motion sickness though. There is absolutely no way. <laughs> oh, you couldn't have your head down looking at a screen. I oh, not I do get that. it. Oh, my. Same oh. thing on a boat. I, I went fishing with my husband, seven months pregnant. Oh my God, I, I caught this huge shark, you know. And well, the guy, it was the first fish brought aboard and he hit it with the gift and knocked it off. And I just, I wanted to throw him in there to go and get my shark, but you know, I couldn't do that. But <laughs> yeah, no, I do not do well with motion. And so I am not the person to travel with. Now I can sleep all the way and then get off, let my stomach settle, and then I am good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so what about a, a cruise ship? I mean, because you know, at some point, we're going to all probably be on a cruise ship together at some point. So oh, um, I don't know. It would have to be really, really smooth because it would be that rhythmic movement. Uh, that that's just no no can't handle oh, it can't handle oh. it and i love then, to ride rides i love to ride amusement rides but i can't do very much of them because you know especially if they're spinning yeah no no they'll uh, take you out of sorts like for the rest of the day man. yes oh. well uh hopefully you know there's this um cool patch thing that i'm going to try because i had a pretty bad bout with motion sickness on my last cruise uh there's this patch that they have that uh you put behind your ear and it's supposed to be god's gift so i'm gonna try it out that, in october so vertigo? i'll let you know what was yeah, that, do you use that for vertigo i don't know i don't know but i'm gonna oh, ask my doctor know. about it yeah, and then yeah. once once I get back, I will let you know, girl. Oh, <laughs> I will let you know. Uh, My husband uh, would be so happy. Let me tell you, he he would be real happy about that. <laughs> yeah, if you could go on a cruise, my goodness. Yeah. All right, so yeah, let me see. Fish, let me think. So we've been, uh, yep, we we man, we are 
we're blazing through. We've even talked a little bit about um, screenwriting. Um, now, have you uh, published anything so far that you've written in conjunction with artificial intelligence? Yes, I have. I have published under some different pen names. I'm not going to reveal those pen names because those are oh, confidential. Please. No, 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 no. I'm That's actually going pen to name. for Mira. But, but I will for Mira Gold. Currently, I editing video is like the bane of my existence right now because I'm behind a learning curve. And, oh, my gosh, there's so much to learn. But, you know, there are so many great are you videos using out there. What are you using for an editor? Well, what am I not using? I just found a recut to take out all those extra spaces. Oh my God, just love it. And I'm using Resolve. And my daughter yep. is trying to get me on board with OBS. But you know, that telescope just does my head in. And I do record quite a bit on Zoom. And I will also use Audacity and a couple of other programs for audio. So I, I am playing in there right now. I'm kind of like Resolve. I feel that I can do a lot of editing inside of Resolve. But you I'm know, always open the, to the tool. You know, if you, um, it's a, I have Resolve, but I, I also uh, have a, like, um, I used to run a different YouTube channel and I started building up a bunch of stuff and I, I got a great um, camera, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And that's what you actually see me on right now is that camera. And oh, nice. uh, when they give you that camera, when they give you that camera, when you purchase that camera, right, um, right. You, <laughs> uh, they give you a copy of Resolve uh, Studio for free. And in Studio, there is a uh, way to edit with uh, text. So that's how I've been doing a lot of my editing now is that really? I I transcribe the whole thing and then I have it take out all the little silent parts. And as a matter of fact, I purposefully during my recordings, I will stop. I will I will just stop talking and click on something, do a thing, move to a new thing, and then turn back and start talking again. And it'll know that that was a space. It'll cut those uh Parts parts off, and all I have to do is kind of go through the video like fast. And I use this; it's a uh, speed editor. It's a, oh, a black magic. Yeah. yeah, and this is a I use this in Resolve, and you could actually use this in Resolve yourself. Now, this if you buy this, it's like three hundred bucks, right? Uh, not really that much money, uh, and it's a great yeah. panel, and it's got a scroll wheel and all of this stuff to help you edit on resolve but guess what it also comes with a free copy of resolve studio so you can then edit like that too so i, I figured out how to do that editing with a words thing on a program called Descript, and i still have a subscription to it that i need to cancel but it is a very very good program for getting rid of ums and extra words and so's and ands and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's also <laughs> another one. But but Resolve is catching up to that and eventually it'll be just as good. I, I go through a couple extra steps in Resolve than I would if I use Descript, but I'm not going to pay for another monthly <laughs> subscription anymore. I mean, I God hear bless. you. <laughs> I hear you. So Every many. time there's a new product, it's Somebody says, hey, Mira, take a look at this. It's like, oh, it's shiny. I've got to see what it is. Oh, my God. It makes my tail wag so hard sometimes. There are so oh. many things out there. Claude, I've, I've only been using Claude, what, for about three weeks now. Thanks to you and your video, because I had to go out there and take a look at that. And I'm just <laughs> blown away by Claude. You know, so yeah. all these different programs that are out there, I just... I've got my hands in so many different, you know, pots. Yeah, that have it's, you? It's hard to have you find played enough with, time in my day. Have you? Have you played around with uh, Code Interpreter? I have, and I. What are your I, thoughts? So, in all reality, I love the thought behind it, but I am finding that there are some issues with it, with it retaining memory. So. 
if I compare Code Interpreter to Claude and being able to upload a document in Claude, Claude hold on to it probably for about 30 to 50 yeah. pages worth of yeah. information going back and forth. And yeah, Claude likes kind of hallucinate. And I don't know if anybody else has this issue, but Claude wants to give almost at least every single one of my characters, or at least one character in story, wants to give them cancer. I don't know why. Every single time. I am not well, kidding you. What is this genre? What is this genre you're writing? Well, it was middle grade and now young adult. I had an academy in there. I'm telling you like seven different subcategories and cancer came up in all of them the worst was whenever it did that to one of my the love interest of a rom-com i'm like who gives the love interest cancer in a rom-com and i'm like well oh, i had you did you did see it. that uh <laughs> you you did see that television show uh how i met your mother right yes yes but you know i <laughs> i'm just saying that, that i want to put in Evil. there <laughs> It's evil. It's evil. It was evil when they did it. So <laughs> I'm just saying, that's evil. Don't do that. <laughs> so I, I kept having to wrangle it and bring it back in. Uh, it threw, so, I, I don't know, a spirit into contemporary. And I'm like, no. And this is Claude that's doing this? Yes. So my contemporary with my young adult, and it has nothing paranormal. Next thing I know, a spirit is coming to visit my young adult protagonist i'm like no that is not <laughs> happening love your creative flair but that is not happening <laughs> so that's yeah, hilarious but but it is crazy but taking a look at the code interpreter i love the implication of it because of the ability to use a framework being able to set up a framework where you can fit eight different steps and tell the system this is a process follow this framework and have it, it each step of the way provide you feedback for you to say okay give me 10 premises i want to move forward with premise number three go to step two it gives you your synopsis telling it you know move on to step three which is an evaluation of the core element of the story so being able to have that framework in place i think is pivotal when it comes to using code interpreter it is not there yet not where i would like to see it but through beta testing and as the developers work on the program oh my gosh i see so many great things that could happen inside of there and it, it's not just that. When when you look at Azure and some of the other programs that are out there and looking at the chain block that, that you can flow through and that workflow, it is amazing how you can marry all these different things within AI. And at some point, we are going to be able to just put in our information and have something come back out for us. But the caveat to that is that just because you have it produce a story doesn't mean that it's 100% viable. You still have to edit. There is always going to be a human touch that has to be done in there because, you know, trash in and tr is going to be trash out. You have to make sure that you have isolated the story, fleshed it out, make sure that it has legs to stand on, and then editing. I, I cannot stress it enough. There are so many AI books that are going out there today or articles that are not being edited. And editing your content is so important. And now with AI, you can ask it to evaluate your content. You can ask AI to do line edits for you. It, you can ask for developmental notes on your content per chapter. And it will give you developmental notes on your content. <laughs> Anything that you can think of is there. It's like a, a, I feel like I'm in a Star Trek episode, you know. Anything you can think of and dream of is possible. I totally agree. There is no real limitations except your imagination. And 100%. it's, you know, it's one of those things that um, we are 
that people are just going to have to get grips, uh, come to grips with. We are trying to promote a positive AI future. And if everybody, in order for all the doom and gloom and naysayers and all of those people to actually be correct, is for all of the optimists to let them go ahead on and be correct. <laughs> you know, uh, I okay. think that there is a optimistic view of the future that could very easily come to fruition, very easily come uh, into being. But it's and 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 having appropriate caution, appropriate uh, apprehension is absolutely a perfect thing to do. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I think back to, and I know this is an odd, you know, parison, but think back to Y2K and the craze surrounding that and how fearful people were. You know, some some people run headfirst into change and other people kind of take a step back and want to kind of kick the tires a bit to make sure that there's not going to be a detrimental bite. And that's okay. We're all different. And it takes all of the different personalities in the world to, you know, keep the world going around. So <laughs> if we were all, yeah, you know, so exactly. But I see, I see great things moving forward with AI. And I hope that even if, one of our videos touches somebody and helps them understand the implications of AI and how it can help them. I think that that that's a positive step for humanity. I mean, think about all of the people who have um, uh, differences neurologically. Yes. Who have who are ADHD, dyslexic on the spectrum in any way, shape, or form has straight coal Asperger's, but actually can see how the artificial intelligence could help them actually relay what's flowing and yes. blossoming in their minds. And they have this opportunity to make a difference in a world that they had had no contact with before because of artificial intelligence. It's a, I, I just hope that people start realizing sooner than later <laughs> that this it's isn't awesome. all bad. Yes, the, this isn't all bad. And it it could be good if we allow it to be. But if we, if we don't allow it to be, then whatever. So, all right. So here's the last uh, thing that I want to talk about. I want to talk about your community. Could you tell us about your Discord server? So the Discord server is actually something that Cece and I, you will know her as word spinner in there. Cece and I kept saying, you know, we love the Slack community, just love it. But we also use other tools other than PseudoWrite and Story Engine. So we wanted a community where people who write you know, traditional style, as well as AI, to come together and meet and be able to discuss all things, you know, from a writer's perspective. And right. I like the fact that we have people coming in that are working with narration, AI narration. We have people asking questions about craft, for writing, for scripts, for fiction, for nonfiction. And the AI writers connection community on discord we welcome everybody and we love having the different opinions in there and being able to see people from all around the world and we have we have a few writers who just kind of opened my eyes to how i see everything very visual because I do have sight i can't always hear things very well because of the hearing burst that I have. So I do understand what a deficit feels like there. But we actually have some writers in the community who have impaired vision and being able to talk to them and understand what their needs are as a writer, 
I would have never thought to do that. And being able to do that now through the community, wow, it's it's amazing what we can do to help each other as writers and pay that knowledge forward. So it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's like it's this entire I you know uh it, it's this entire universe of people that are are different than just independent authors or different than the 20 books to 50k people or different yes. you know we're we're different than those people but we're also those people we are we are you know both the 20 50, 20 to 50k people and we're also AI writers. Uh, there is no either or about that with us. There's a lot of either or <laughs> with other people. You know, I'm either a writer or I'm an AI writer. I'm like, well, I am an AI writer. I, but I, I would, I would much prefer to say that I am a person who uh, writes with the assistance of AI. I use uh, my my tool for writing is artificial intelligence. That's how I like to put it. And uh, I I find your community warm and cozy and full of smart people. We have uh, we have several communities that we uh, that we are all involved in and that we hop, we all hop between all of the communities. There's oh, yes, no exclusivity. You know, that, that's what's so funny about that. There's no exclusivity or anything like that. Uh, some of us spend more time in one place than the other place. Uh, John, he's always in the Slack. Uh, yes. Uh, Marigold is always over at the AI Writers Connection. Uh, I am always in either the AI Writers Connection or over at the Nerdy Novelists. I love that. He's got an S at the end of his <laughs> novelist. And so it makes me just want to just like trail that S forever. And does he so, have a group? Does he have uh, a group? Yes. Do you, are you oh, not I a part? I not know that. I am not. I'm going to have to look for that. I watch his yes. videos. So I'm going right, to have so to go. All right. So he made an, you, he made an announcement uh, about the Discord and there's a link there. As a matter of fact, everybody that's watching right now, there's going to be a link for this in uh, a link for uh, the AI Writers Connection in and uh, for the Nerdy Novelist uh, uh, Discord server. Both of those servers, you want to be on both of them. Some of them, they have uh, similar but different communities. And could you also tell us about your YouTube channel? So the, the YouTube channel... I didn't plan on really having a lot of stuff out there, but then people kept saying, Hey, Miracle, can you help me with this or help me with that? And, and I kept thinking, well, I am helping people and I love teaching. So I kind of married that together and a recording and putting that content out there, that is my way of paying it forward. At one point, I was that same author who was out there that was aspiring. I was that fledgling that knew nothing about craft. And I had some great people who took the time to help me. Cece was my first editor ever. Loved, loved every moment of that edit. I learned so much. But I feel that in this community, there are so many people that want to share the knowledge. This was a good way for me to share the knowledge. And one of the things that I wish that I could see more on my channel would be people telling me what kind of videos they want to see. What is it that they're having a hard time with? Whether it is out in Slack in the AI writers community or leaving comments on videos, just to let us know what it is that they are looking for or what they may have a hard time with so that people like 30 novelists like you in your channel like my channel can put that content out there and share but yeah. yeah it's it's blowing my mind to see people that are actually out there and watching it i'm like they're really watching my videos yes they're really watching sure. yes they're really watching it's really it, i don't know it's surreal I told you, I, I in, in the introduction to this video, I explained to the people that uh, watching you teach 
uh being in the being there in the, the the tone of your voice the compassion and the patience that you uh exude you don't necessarily just say i'm i'm patient and stuff you just are and you go through the moments and you're meticulous and you try your best to explain it to the best of your ability really all that anybody ever asks right and so so what uh i'm i'm positive people are getting when they watch your videos, because they are completely different than uh, Jason's videos. And they're completely different than my videos, which are completely different than Jason's videos, you know? Uh, and we all attack things from a different point of view. Uh, and and every uh, everyone, I'm telling you, she does deep dives. She has, uh, how long are your videos usually? 50 minutes long, 40 minutes? They, they can be long. And, and that was one of the things people kept saying, well, do short ones, do short ones. And I have a hard time doing short videos because I, I have no concept of time. I am not kidding. No concept <laughs> of time. But I get I that. Watch, I, I will watch your videos and I'm like, gosh, I wish that I could be more charismatic like that. And then I'll watch the movie <laughs> novelist and I'm like, Gosh, I wish I was comfortable enough to just let go and and just speak about whatever, you know, crosses my mind and not have to fully plan things sometimes. And I love the fact that the new novelist will pick one specific topic and cover that in some little shorts. Some of his are longer, but I love that he could do that. I have a hard yep, time yep. doing just little I bitty pieces. I find it, I find that I need to build it upon each other and I need that closure at the end. So I guess that's yeah. why I do longer videos. <laughs> well, can I make a suggestion? Can yes, I make a suggestion that, uh, that you, um, that you uh, have three subjects that you want to cover, that you sit down and you just cover those three subjects? Uh, however long it takes, which it probably will take about as long as you would for one subject for a long video. But since you have the idea that you're going to succinctly explain something and give an example, and then that's the video, right? Then yes. you cut that piece off and you cut that other piece off, you cut that other piece off, and you got three 20 minute videos instead of one 60 minute video. And then you so can. I did that. I did yeah. that and I did that. I have. 12 different videos that I chopped up and some of them are really short. Some of them are longer, Good. but I actually have more views on my longer videos than I do on any of my shorter, which is really amazing to me. So I, I well, don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it. So what you do is uh, you do what I like, uh, what, not what I, what the industry likes to call repackaging. So what you uh, do is uh, you have it as a long video, right? The, right? the three things all together is a long video. So people who want to, they can watch the whole big long thing, right? Yeah. And uh, and then or they can watch the shorter version, which is like twenty minutes long for this one subject, as opposed to these three subjects in one video. And then you hit both of your people, you know. Oh, you hit the people who like the short stuff. Yeah, you hit the people who like it and the people who don't. It's just, you know, a classic repackage. I know? hadn't so. even thought about repassing some of the content that's long into shorter. I just automatically started videotaping shorter segments. So that's that's an interesting take. I like that. Yeah, yeah. You can cut some, you know, it, it makes... Uh, it it makes it so that you have a lot of content that you've already built, and you you know if you go back, if you go back, not that this is a uh, uh, a consult uh, consultation session or anything, but <laughs> but if you go back, if you go back to uh, your old videos and you uh, realize that you're just talking about a specific type of thing, or you're talking about prompting in this moment, or you're talking about that, just cut those things out and plop them down as their own video. And uh, since you have that avatar um, that everyone is looking at right now, you <laughs> uh, you can uh, just pose her in different, get, you know, get as many avatar -y poses of her as you can and uh, just start, you know, putting her 
with different facial expressions and stuff like that on each one of the videos and um and make sure that you there's a thing in the back of it where you can add it as a podcast almost all of your stuff should be uh added as podcast this way people can listen to them uh on uh on uh youtube music and everything so oh, as a just a regular podcast that. Yeah, the, you'll see it in the uh, stu- if you go on the desktop uh, um, YouTube studio. There's a little thing on podcast. It'll probably have a little question mark. You hit the question mark and see what it's about. Yeah, I'm I am so. new to YouTube 100 percent. When I started the channel, that literally I am new to YouTube, so I am learning as I go. And I have to tell you, watching you, I think I watched you during one of your very first live streaming at least for this channel and uh-huh. I'm thinking man I want to do that and watching what Elizabeth Ann West does with the live book generation I want to do one of those I want to do one of those so bad but well, the technology yeah. of streaming I'm like oh I just don't know but I would love to do it well, you, uh, you know, your, your, your daughter's right about OBS. It's what I use for uh, all of my stuff, except for interviews for the podcast. I use StreamYard for that. But other than that, I use OBS. Uh, maybe we'll uh, have a, maybe I'll give you some videos that I can specifically send you to so that you can understand how to spin it up so that it's like, because you'll need you'll need something called a stream deck and all of this stuff. So once you once we uh, you really get rolling on your channel, we'll get you straight on that stuff. So oh, I anyway, see a video coming from you on this. I, I see a video <laughs> being posted on how to do all this. <laughs> yeah, that might happen. That might very well happen. So you have any questions of me? Do you have anything that you wanted to ask me anything? So I do have a question. You had mentioned that you had a story that an individual had told you about some time back. It was a thriller. It was in one of your segments where you were talking about this individual telling you about the novel and that you wanted to write that novel. I don't remember what the title was, but you had talked about this individual and I, I'm not sure if that person has passed or not but you had talked about wanting to so have you you moved forward with it okay so um it was my mother-in-law okay and uh she was sick and she was on dialysis and at some point she decided she was done with the dialysis and uh so we were you know taking turns everybody come to the hospital for you know, three, yeah. four, five, six, eight hours sort of thing. And uh, I was there the day before she passed. And we worked on uh, Oliver Blake, um, a uh, British uh, detective. Her favorite thing was to watch British detective shows. So she helped nice. me. Yeah. So she helped me develop this whole character I kind of had in my mind uh, the guy from Ted Lasso. Have you seen Ted Lasso? I actually did a full breakdown of Ted Lasso. So, yes, yes, um, I did that. Oh, wow. Through stage 32 through the writer's room and coverage. Uh, great experience. All right. So then you um, know the uh, one who played Nate. So... Nate, so, the, the one who turns evil and ends yes. up uh, being the head of the uh, other club. And then he comes back by the end, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and that uh, that actor was my avatar for the for my idea of what he would look like. Uh, and I brought this I brought the picture in. I said, I want to make something with this guy, but I want your help. I want your help. I want you to. Help me what your favorite genre is. And then we went through her favorite genre. She came up with the name. I, I went to Chat GPT and I came up with all of these cool British names. And uh, she she looked at it and, she, and I read them all off. And she was like, I 
I like Blake. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right. And then we uh, uh, came up with the fact that uh, he uh, uh, was slightly autistic, talked slow, but was absolutely super brilliant and was always underestimated and uh, took forever to become a detective. You know, so he has a little gray in his hair and he's very, uh, and he's a junior detective and he gets thrust into a big case that ends up making him famous, you know? And, uh, and so uh, we came up with all of that stuff. And uh, she helped me in the last day, the uh, 48 hours before she passed away, she helped me develop four stories, four stories and ideas for another six. So there's 10 novels that I would like to help. I would like to put her name on um, so, and my name and uh, and we write them together kind of posthumously. Yeah, so and, and I that you can so do that. And I. I have a background in teaching writing in one, one like novel basics. If there's mm -hmm. anything that I can help you, I would love to see you bring those to fruition because what better way to honor that memory and to actually I feel that, that you have brought it forward and it, it's, it allows you to spend time with that individual who you love and it, it lets you, it, it's kind of like a healing process too. So yeah. I, I would love to see you bring those to light. I, you know what would you know what it would have been really cool like if she had lived for another like two three years or something and we could have like really kind of fleshed it out like and and we would have really had a a, a nice runway or something but I she loves I mean I can't tell you how many Helen Mirren and uh, uh, Puro uh, DVDs that we uh, emptied out of her house. She loved. <laughs> uh, she loves a good mystery. You know what I mean. She loves a good mystery with a good red herring and the whole nine yards. She loves it. She loved it. And so, um, so I've written uh, the first four chapters of the first book. I've written the first four what? chapters of the first, okay. uh, almost five chapters, really. Um, I'm doing it in pseudo write and story engine because it's the literally the best place to spin things up uh, that are um, are nuggets of ideas. You know what I mean? So if you uh, pseudo write is so good uh, in story engine for um, like if you have a really good brain dump. A really good idea of what the brain dump is. Now, don't get me wrong. Pseudorite has its quirks. You have to kind of, uh, Story Engine has its quirks. I don't like having too much information, you know, too, like, I, I almost want to clear out the synopsis and everything. After we develop stuff, then I say take it off uh, out of uh, Pseudorite and make sure to spit it all out into other documents, uh, either in pseudo write or, but definitely out of story engine, you know, well, and percent. yeah, because it's, uh, it gets so confused so easily. If it has too much stuff to the left, if it has too much stuff to the left, it just, it, it'll insert something. And I'll think maybe I did that. Did I, did I miss something? Did I forget? You know what I mean? And so you'll, you'll work on I these do. It's very frustrating in some ways. And so the way I like to use Story Engine is to develop the story to a certain point. Then I pull it out, go into other things, and try and enrich that thing so that when I put the chapters into uh, back in the Story Engine, I have all of the chapters that I really need, right, on a document outside of that. And so I can just chunk in 10 chapters and let it kind of figure things out between the synopsis and the 10 chapters. You know, I don't want lots of information. And I definitely will not tell it who murdered whoever. And I definitely will not tell it who the killer is. I definitely will not tell it anything that it, that it doesn't already know because it's a tattletale 
It's um, it's <laughs> juvenile. It doesn't like to do what you like that what you want it to do. And so, and these are frustrating frustrations that I think people have to really understand. You know what I mean? They have to really understand that it it, it most authors that I uh, I watch something. And they'll, someone was like, oh, that was crap. I was like, of course it was crap. You didn't write anything. Uh, you didn't write anything for it to write anything. You know, you wrote a thing and you said, and you expect it to just spit out perfect prose. And your expectations are over. Uh, you have, you're over, ex, you're, um, you're, you're, you're re, your expectations are being, uh, cannot be exceeded because you are, completely wrong on how much you think that this thing can do it can go to a certain point and that's it <laughs> that well, that, that's where that's where the vagueness comes in and that is one of the biggest things that i see in a story is one if it's too vague the ai is going to basically give you whatever it thinks that you're wanting and it's not learning your writing style it is actually going off of patterns so it is right. taking a look at your word choices and if a mysterious note appears and then people plot a plan well that's not enough for the ai to make a decision on you need to state what that letter has in it you need to state who's in the room so like you, if I am plotting something and I am bringing it to the table, I am going to have absolutely nothing in any of my fields. Believe it or not, I will come in and put something in the outline that just says um, section one dash introduction and then have the colon and then I'll say chapter one and then I will just put the POV name and then I'll go to chapter two. POV name. That is wow. all I do in my outline because I found that it works better for me if I wrap all of my content inside of my beats. And I will do that wow. with my characters. I will do that with my tropes and themes. I will give it a character list inside of my beats. I will do right, everything. Everybody. Remember, everybody, this is about pseudo write. Pseudo write. Yes. We're talking right. about and being in story that. engine and, mm -hmm. and pseudo right. But go ahead. Yeah. 100%. I will do that whenever I am inside a story engine. Now, if I'm in cloth, I will basically upload a document and I will tell it exactly how I want it to write something. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting to look at all the different AIs and how similar but different they can all be. But at the core... I can use some of my same prompts, even for my style or genre, the same thing that I would put inside of my style box or genre box inside of a story engine through pseudo write. I can take some of that same concept information and I mm -hmm. can layer it into my documentation for chat GPT. I can layer it into my content for Claude Jasper as well. Uh, Jasper is one that I have been using. I love plotting in Jasper, actually. Jasper, I can do the same things in there. I still have to kind of massage it a lot for the pros. It does great for scripts. It does great for evaluating content. But I still have to massage Jasper a lot for my pros for fiction work. But right. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not really it, built it's, to, you know. That, that's where you have to kind of tweak your, your prompts a little bit and mm -hmm. get it to do what you want it to do through prompting and treat it like a conversation inside of the body. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. So, you know, it has been uh, an hour and 39 minutes. <laughs> it has been a while. It has been a it minute. Has, <laughs> it has been a minute. Uh, the, you know, there was one thing that I, uh, when you were talking about it, uh, you need to look into your custom instructions on chat GPT, because if okay. you look into that, it, the second box down, it, it can be used to, uh, put in a style box. Yes. I've actually done that. And that's a lot of fun. And I'm also looking at some additional information through Azure and, and other 
programs where I can actually play more with my framework and mm. that I'm actually having a lot of fun with. And whenever I get it tweaked the way that I want it, that will actually be a class also. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of that knowledge. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing an actual custom instructions video because um, I because the uh, the chat can't be a uh, a novelist uh, and a science fiction writer that a, that want, is an award winning New York editor. <laughs> you know, it, they can't be all of these things all the time for everything. So I have an I have an off system document that I can take these custom instructions, both both sets and move them onto this document or just cut those out uh, out of there and move new stuff into there to change its functions. I want it to be a real estate god. I want it to be a I want it to be a great accountant. I want it to be a good programmer. I want it to be, you know, whatever. And so uh and then you can just have all of these like sections. I think I'm gonna build a thing where uh, build a uh, a document that has this custom inst these are the custom instructions you can use for being uh for having a college professor or you know or a um a, a banker or uh you know that sort of stuff so and I that's interesting it, it's interesting that you do that cc and i have this huge rolling spreadsheet where we have all of the different character voices that we use for style and items within genre or for other LMSs whenever we are wanting to emulate a specific voice. Something and they don't tell everybody. Mm -hmm. yep. We, we fall back on that all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, we fall back on that all the time. I have taken some of my previously published work and have run it through to grab the the stylistic voice of my writing from past stuff. And I can actually incorporate that and bring that into the AI. But my point to that is that definitely you want to do that. Now, I find it interesting that you and Elizabeth prompt by telling the chat GPT or the AI that, you know, you are in this role and this is what I need for you to, to perform this function. I don't ever tell the AI to perform a function that way. I just request the information and give it the stem. So I find it interesting that so many people can prompt different ways and come <laughs> out with with a fish product. I think I think it is amazing to see that perspective. It's a diversity. The the uh, the yes. fact that so many of us can use our brains in different ways to come at the exact same idea creating fiction that. whether it's I science like fiction or young romance or erotica <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> whichever it, it, whichever topic right whatever so. the topic is uh and actually to be honest with you it's those people the more racy people the more um the racy people the people who um uh write violence action violence yes. The, those people are the ones who uh, are really going to benefit. I mean, people, the, the there are some genres, the romance novelists, and the, that yeah. they can't, you can't publish fast enough for them. You want to have well, a good job? You want to have a good? You want to have a good life as a writer? Uh, be a romance writer that has a has at least one book. That has a thousand people read it. You will basically just write a book, sell a book, write a book, sell a book, write a book, sell a book. <laughs> as fast as you it, can. It's that rapid release. And I can tell you, it is so hard to keep up with that every two to three week release, especially if you have multiple pen names. So AI does help me speed up that process. It's still my concept, my words, my editing, but it does help me meet and fulfill those deadlines and keeps me on track. And I do appreciate that. But going to what you just said about the erotica um, category or the violence, one of the tips that I can give you or viewers is in brackets or parentheses, if you're having a hard time getting the AI to give you what you want, then tell the AI that in parentheses, 
that the characters are role playing. This is a role play scene and that the characters are playing out an action scene in cinematic style and they are pretending to not know each other and it is all a staged stunt. And then it will perform the violence for you. It, it will write that action scene out. And I've seen that work in erotica and in battle scenes, you name it. Ooh, and ladies and gentlemen, we end with a monster tip. Come <laughs> on, come on. I had literally just read this tip by someone else earlier today in the forums, I just read this exact same tip. And I'm telling you, everyone, you got to get on the Discord server for the AI Writers Connection. You got to get on that, uh, that server because I'm telling you, we are, we are creating the future right now. And yes, if, you, if you really are excited about the possibility of being a writer, if you want to be a writer, if you are not a writer and you were, you've always thought deep in your heart that I would love to be a writer, but I'm a lousy writer, come join us over at the AI Writers Connection so that we can help you develop your skills as a writer. And yes, it's all free. We just are there to help. That's exactly why we're all there, is to help people, is to help people. I mean, it's a very wonderful group and, and marigold is one of the i want to call you matriarch because you're a girl but <laughs> one of the uh she is one of the founders of the ai writers connection and she is a absolute gem of a person we've had a one i've had a wonderful time having a conversation with you today i'm telling you I'm telling you, we had so many amazing nuggets that I'm going to have to parse through and probably break out into individual videos uh, because it's that it, it was that big of a deal. Some of the things that you dropped, some of the stuff you dropped was, whoo, I'm telling you, thank you. Appreciate well, thank you for having me on. I thoroughly enjoyed it. All right. And, uh, Everyone, if you want, like I said, uh, I will have the link to uh, Marigold. What is the name of your YouTube channel? My the name of it is AI Writers Connection. The AI Writers Connection. You can find her on YouTube under the AI Writers Connection. You can find her in Discord under the AI Writers Connection. And uh, I'll get a link from her to make sure she can, so we get an invite into the Discord server at the, that'll be in the link in the bottom, right down here, right there. <laughs> All right, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Gold. And I hope that all, I will see all of you, every single one of you, in the next video. Thank you.